Hi friends, today we're going to be making it so we can pick up some weapons. Last time we made a very simple inventory that can take in three items. Well, doesn't show it now, but it can take three items, primary, secondary, and melee. And today we're going to be making it so we, when we pick up a weapon, it goes into a good slot. I'm going to create a new C Sharp script called player pickup. And I'm going to drag it onto my player. And then I'm going to open it. Delete the default functions. Right, basically what all we want to do is raycast from the middle of the screen into the world and then check if we hit a weapon. Let's first get the raycast, raycasting down. So I'm going to create a private void update. Of course, this is where we want to check if we are raycasting because this is called each frame now we don't want to check each frame what we hit we just want to check if we press the pickup key so if input dot get key down key code and i'm gonna use e you can use q r whatever you want maybe f so here we're gonna check each frame if we press this button if we did we want to raycast and you can see if you go to the Unity API and check physics.raycast, it says it casts a ray from point origin in direction direction of length max distance against all colliders in the scene. You may optionally provide a layer mask to filter out any colliders you aren't interested in generating collisions with. Basically what all of this means, we're going to get a origin point, then we're going to send a ray in one of the directions, which is in front of the player. We're going to raycast for some distance, for pickup range distance, maybe like 5 or 10, depending on how far you want to pick up, be able to pick up the weapons. Layer masks, I will explain that, and that's pretty much everything we'll need. Okay, so we'll need a couple of variables. First, I will have a serialized field, private, float, pickup, range. Again, this is how far will be able to raycast and then pick up a weapon. We will also need a reference to our camera. So I'll go ahead and say private camera cam. This is because we need to first find the point in the camera, in the camera view, and then transform it into a point in the world. And in order to know which camera, I'll create a private void start. And in here I'll say cam is equal to get component in children camera. You could use camera.main, which will return the main camera. So like this, camera.main. That works as well. Uh, I just think we will use get component in children because I think it's a lot cleaner to do. Okay, I'll create a serialized field, private layer mask, and I'll call this one pickup layer. Now, a layer we already used them before so each object has a layer by default it's default for example our ground has a ground layer and we're gonna create new prefabs for all the pickup weapons that are gonna be on a pickup layer which we did not create yet but we're just gonna be raycasting that one layer before we continue I'll just organize my start method so I'll create a private void get references and in here I'll just say cam is equal get component children camera and then I'll just call get references I think it's much better this way it makes it much cleaner okay in order to raycast we can say if physics dot raycast and you can see we need a ray and a ray uh, you could give it exactly origin and then direction as you can see but you could just give it a ray which has both the uh, origin and the direction. So we're going to create a new ray here. It's going to be a ray. I'm going to call it ray. It's going to be equal to cam dot viewport point to ray. And it returns a ray going from camera through a viewport point. And we want to go from screen dot width divided by two and screen dot height divided by two. Now you can see we get an error because it takes in a vector 3 as you can see. So we need to say new vector 
three and then put all of that inside of it. You can see we will create a new ray from the center of the screen which is basically the width of the screen divided by two and the height of the screen divided by two. That is basically the center of the screen. And we don't need to define the Z, so this is X, this is Y, we don't need to define Z because you can see it says Z to zero. So now we have a ray, so I'll just give it a ray. And then you can see we need a max distance, which is pickup range. Then we need a layer mask, which is our pickup layer. But we also want to be able to know what we hit. In order to do that, we can create a ray cast hit, hit. So this is gonna uh, return information about the object that we hit. And then I'll say out hit. And do this because it's an if statement. Now I order them a bit wrong. So it needs to go ray out hit. This basically means it returns hit. It takes in our pickup range and pickup layer. So it needs to look exactly like this or you're gonna get errors. Okay, and let's just say, let's just debug uh, raycasted. Or no, we can, uh, we can say hit and then we're gonna say uh, hit, which returns data about the object that we hit, hit.transform.name. So we're just gonna print out the name of the transform that we hit. Here we have a couple of variables. I set my pickup range to five and the pickup layer we don't currently have. That's because we need to create a new set of weapons. These weapons are the weapons that we're gonna equip in our hand. And then we want weapons that are gonna be laying around in the ground, which are gonna be a bit different than these. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna select this folder of uh, my weapons. I'm gonna press Control D to duplicate and I'm gonna name this these ones weapon weapons pickups or weapon pickups, right? And then in here, I'm gonna select all of them and we're gonna need to add a couple of things. Now, you can add a box collider to all of them. And now if you drag them in the scene, you'll be able to see, you know, the collider of it. So this is the part where you're gonna raycast and you can click edit collider here to edit the collider. Now it doesn't have to be perfect, but uh, you should place it around the area where the gun is. So just drag these around until you get a nice collider. It doesn't have to be perfect again. It's fine. Okay, and once you have the collider set, move on to the next one. So I have the next one. I'll drag it. Okay, once you have all of your colliders, you can go and select all the objects in the scene by left click and then shift left clicking, go to overrides and apply all. And now it's gonna apply them to these prefabs, so each time you join each time you drag it in back again, it's gonna have the new collider and not the old one. We also want to set the layer to pickup layer, so I'm gonna go click here, add layer, and I'm gonna add a pickup layer. Just like that, select all of them. Layer, pickup, yes, change children too, and go to overrides and apply all. This just applies the changes to these prefabs. And I'm also going to rename them. So this is going to be Remington 870 pickup. And again, go to the next one, do the same thing, pickup. Just so we have them organized a bit better. I'll just copy the pickup and then I'll just paste it onto each new object just like that and again select all of them overrides apply no overrides okay then i'm gonna delete these and drag these back into here so now i'm gonna create new objects from them good and now we have our objects set like that and now we should be able to raycast onto them if we go to our player set the pickup layer to pickup. You can see it's kind of hard to see where I'm aiming. So what we're gonna do real quick is go to our canvas, go to HUD, right click, add a new UI image. And this one I'm gonna call Crosser. And then I'm gonna go to the game view just so I can see it. 
uh, and I'm gonna set the width to about 7.5 and height to another 7.5 and I'll change my color completely to green by just removing the red and blue and now you can see we have a small point here that is our crosshair so it's a bit easier to see where we're aiming now let's go ahead and do this okay it doesn't seem to be working and it's not working because I use viewport point array and we need to be using a screen point array so just use screen point array and then leave everything else the same and now if we play you can see if I come if I aim at the AK it says it hit AK 47 pickup M24 Remington my knife and my pistol is all the way here so we can detect which object we hit now we just need to uh, find the item of that object and I found that the easiest way is to just go to scripts maybe go to the items folder and then create a new c-sharp script call it item object and this script is just gonna hold an item and I will just say item public item and I'll call it item okay and then we're gonna attach this script to all the uh, game objects that we have so you can go into your weapon pickups prefabs select all of them go add component and add the item object component and now we're gonna have to select each one so this is the AK-47, this is the knife, this is the M24, the M1911, and the Remington. So now each one of them has a script that we can get reference to in order to find the item that we need. So in our script, we can go ahead and instead of debugging here, we can still debug. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is say I, I want to get the weapon that we need so we're gonna create a new weapon call it new weapon or new item you can call it whatever you want that's gonna be equal to hit dot get or sorry hit that transform dot get component and I'm gonna get component item object oh sorry that's not the one item object and that is the component that we just added to all of our items and then I can say dot item but you can see I can only re return item I need weapon in order to add it to my inventory so you can cast it as a weapon so you can say as weapon oh, sorry without that and now it's gonna cast this and it's gonna check if that's a weapon because it is a weapon it's gonna return true always and we're not gonna have our item object on there if it's not a weapon so it's going to return this item as a weapon pretty much and then we can add it to our inventory so we'll go ahead up here and create a private inventory inventory and i'm going to go down to my get references which is called in my start method inventory is equal to get component and oh sorry get component and i'm just going to call inventory so I'm going to find the inventory on the player object and that's the inventory I'm going to use and then I can go here and say inventory dot add item and I'm going to add my new item. You could call it new weapon it does make much more sense. So basically all we do is see which object we hit. We find the item object which contains the item of that object. We cast it as a weapon and then we add it to the inventory. We also want to destroy it from the world, so we'll say destroy hit that game object, or we can just say hit that transform that game object, just like that. So we pick up the weapon and then we destroy the game object. And now, if we've done everything correctly, we should be able to pick up our weapon. So I'll go ahead and just open my inventory just so we can see what we, what we have. And I'm gonna go over to my AK. Click it and now you can see we have an AK. If I swap it out with a Remington, you can see now I have a Remington. I can pick up my knife and I can also go ahead and pick up my pistol. Now the animations are still not here, but this is great news because our code works. And uh, next time we'll just create a bit of a UI and then we'll move on to the actual animations with all the weapons. Hopefully you understand this, it shouldn't be too hard, we just send a ray from the camera into the world, find the object that we have, find the item pickup on it, and find the item and then add it to our inventory. It's quite simple. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. 
join me next time and hopefully you'll learn something new. Okay now, bye bye.